Uh, hi there, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick short video about uh, digital elevation models. Uh, within this video I'm hoping that we're going to learn how to hydrologically correct uh, a digital elevation model and derive some hydrological data sets like flow accumulation, flow directions and uh, some stream networks. So. This uh, digital elevation model has been freely available. It's a uh, 90 meter resolution, and uh, you could get it from the SRTM website. Um, but it's uh, important to keep in mind that sometimes when you download this data, they come up with some uh, errors or some problems, if I may say. Uh, mostly, what you get with uh, digital elevation models is uh, some artifacts, and you tend to get some sinks which they aren't really things actually they're just uh, some errors that might have occurred during the collection or maybe the interpolation technique that's been used for the creation of the elevation model so what we are going to do first is to hydrologically correct the data set uh, make sure you do have your spatial analyst toolbox turned on you could do that from the customized extensions and uh, make sure it's turned on here. I do have mine turned on, and I'm just going to use the search bar. It's very much quicker for me to use. I'm just going to type in field, and um, here we go. You have the field from the spatial analyst toolbox, and um, what you need to do is to drag in the digital vision model and put it in. And I'm just going to let it go to the default geo database and I'm going to rename it to dm underscore field. And everything is going to be left as default. And I click on OK. And here it's completed. If we just quickly visualize these two different elevation models, we don't really see that much of a difference because. Uh, it's not really meant to make any much difference. What it really does is just uh, correct the DEM. Uh, if there are any uh, sinks which aren't really sinks, it tends to fill it out all and your digital vision model is ready to go. And the next tool I'm going to use is the flow direction. I'm just going to type in flow direction. Here we go. And you bring in the flow direction. What this tool does, it takes the digital vision model and creates a new raster model of a uh, flow direction of the directions that water flow to on the surface of your DEM. So I'm going to put in the digital vision model, let it go to the default geo database. I'm going to rename that to DEM underscore FD for flow direction. Leave every other thing as default click OK and hopefully that shouldn't take that long yeah 2.6 seconds and here we're going to have a new raster data set that have been color coded for us already and it does have this uh, number that's been classified 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 all of this number means uh, different directions of the flow uh, if you go into the flow direction tool and you go into tool help you will see a better description of what this numbers means. They all mean different directions. Some are going to the north, some are going to the west, and to the south. With this model, you can be able to determine uh, stuff like uh, surface runoff within your study area and other things like that. And the next tool I want to use is the flow accumulation. Uh, here we go. Uh, what the flow accumulation does is it takes the flow direction raster and it calculates uh, the pixels that do have the highest uh, number of pixels that are flowing into it so it, uh, it actually just calculates basically the areas or the pixels with the highest amount of water accumulating within that area uh, let it go to the default geo database, rename it dm underscore fa for flow accumulation leave the output type as a floating point and run Hopefully this shouldn't take long, 4 seconds, good, and here we go. And what the highest number here tells us, uh, 60,813, it means uh, this area, the, the white areas basically are the areas with the highest amount of accumulating water within the study area. 
And what I want to do here is uh, create a stream network from this flow accumulation raster data set. And uh, one way of doing it is uh, to play around with the symbology and the classification techniques. So what I did was just, uh, sorry, too fast. I double clicked on the digital elevation model, uh, the flow accumulation I just created, and it invoked up this layer properties window. And I go onto the symbology tab and go to classified, and um, go into classify, and take the classes down to two. And what I do is I start playing with this number from, let's say, 1000 and see what it looks like. I'll take 0 to 1000 to be n not anything relevant in terms of uh, stream networks and whatever it starts from 1000 to the highest number I want to see it as a stream network and here we go this is what I do have so all these pixels, uh, the pixels are ranging from 1000 to 60,813 and I want to consider this as my stream network within my study area but the thing here is I do not have this as a permanent layer I'm only reclassifying the flow accumulation raster so what I want to do now is to use the raster calculator to help us create a new boolean raster model of uh, a stream network so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to use a conditional tool uh, what I like doing here in the raster interface is to just punch into the to the keys and to the layers rather than typing it in because it's a very sensitive uh, tool here we do have uh, so I'm gonna make a conditional statement I'm gonna say please GIS give me all the flow accumulation pixels that are greater or equal to 1000 if this is true give me back 1 and if it's false I don't want to know about it so just give me no data and I'm gonna let it go to the default geodatabase I'm just gonna rename it uh, stream underscore net keep it short and click on OK and hopefully this will give me a new raster data set with just the stream network so now I do have my flow accumulation raster my flow direction raster my hydrologically correct uh, digital elevation model which I use the field tool on and finally now I have created a stream network layer uh, so thank you very much for watching if you do like this video please uh, like below thank